Hello, everyone. I'm Christy Oliver, the Professional Development Manager at Davis Publications. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon for um, our weekly webinar. They happen every Tuesday afternoon through mid-June. Today, we are thrilled to have five amazing panelists, all elementary art teachers who are enthusiastic about teaching with contemporary art. But before we get to that, we have a few quick housekeeping things to review. We would love for you to ask questions throughout our time together. The best way to do that is to type your questions into the chat box or use the Q&A button. Both can be found at the bottom of your screen. We'll be monitoring these throughout the session and we'll get to as many questions as we can during our time together. Also, just a reminder that we are recording this session and after we finish today, a link to the video will be emailed to you and will be available for viewing at davisart.com slash free resources for anyone who might like to watch. Next slide, please. And now I'll pass it off to our fabulous panelists. Hi, I'm Marie Elchin and I'm from Philadelphia. I teach fifth through eighth grade art at Christopher Columbus Charter School. Hi everyone, my name is Maureen Hergott. I'm an elementary art teacher. My students are in grades first through fifth and I teach at Westdale Elementary School in Franklin Park, Illinois. Hi everyone, I'm Natovia McLeod. I teach at Colgate Elementary School in Baltimore, Maryland, and I went to MICA for my Master of Art in Teaching. Hi, my name is Julia Munar. I teach at PS8 in Brooklyn Heights, and I've been teaching elementary art for 13 years. Hi, my name is Emily Sanzagata, and I've been teaching elementary art for 17 years, and I teach at the Pike School in Andover, Massachusetts. Great. In addition to our fabulous panelists, you'll also hear three monitor moderators this afternoon. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Christy Oliver, and I am the Professional Development Manager for Davis Publications. Hi, I'm Rob Santagata. I'm the Director of Digital Curriculum for Davis Publications. I'm also an editor and write for School Arts Magazine and do all sorts of other things. Hi, my name is Emma Nordeen. I'm the Manager of Education Initiatives at Art21. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Art21 is a nonprofit which has existed for over 20 years. And it's our mission to inspire a more creative world through the work and words of artists. Um, we have several documentary series that help us do that, but I'm going to save that for later and we'll be talking a little bit more later. Okay, so um, quick overdue of today's session. We are doing our introduction now. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion with a variety of questions. Each panelist has pre-selected a question to answer, so you'll see uh, a few slides and a few more in-depth answers to the first round of questions. Uh, and then after that, we will go to the Q&A section in which we will answer as many questions from you, the audience, as possible. Uh, but you can start typing in your questions as soon as you want. If you'd like to direct your question to a particular panelist, please indicate who your question would be for at the beginning of your question. That'll make it a little bit easier uh, otherwise, we'll just either direct it to someone or we'll see who wants to answer it. Um, after that, we've got, a, Emma's going to tell you a little bit about Art21. We've got some top five artists to work with in the classroom, and then we'll have our conclusion. So um, we are ready to get started with um, our first question. So our first question is going to go to Julia, and it is, what was the scariest thing about using contemporary art in your classroom? Um, hi. Um, so I don't think it's scary to start teaching with contemporary art in your classroom, although I understand that you may have some hesitations. One fear that I think that some teachers have with including contemporary art in their curriculum is the idea that you may have to totally change the way that you're teaching and throw out all of your old lessons. And something I, I think that you could help you overcome that is to start small. Think of one lesson that you'd like to bring new life to. And when you think about that idea or that topic, then you might not have to change much, just add some contemporary artists to that existing lessons. It, adding contemporary art might change the conversation a bit, but in an exciting way. 
For example, I bet that most of you teach a port <laughs> I bet most of you teach a portrait lesson at some point during the school year. These are three artists that I have shared with my students when I've taught a portrait lesson. Um, you can see all three of these portrait, all three of these artists have um, approached portraiture in different ways. You can see Michelaine Thomas has sort of a, a collage portrait here. Tim Hawkinson has this moving portrait that's hooked up to a machine. And Janine Antoni has two busts of herself, one out of chocolate and one out of soap. And all three of these artists um, use different mediums and you know, approach portraiture in different ways. When I share these with my students, I share them along with some more traditional portraits. And then we had a conversation about um, just like the broad range of portraits and why these artists might have chosen to approach portraiture in these different ways or why they've chosen to um, use these particular mediums. And I think it's really exciting for kids to see adult artists working in ways that, they, that are unexpected. So next slide. Um, so after showing my students a broad range of portraits and having these um, conversations, then um, they chose their own way that they wanted to approach portraiture. And um, as you can see, they all came out totally differently. And I think that that's because like when you show students that art isn't just one thing, it can be all of these different things, then it frees them up to like, express themselves. And they get this idea that everyone's art is gonna look a little bit different because everyone is, is different. <laughs> so um, next slide, please. Um, so another fear um, may be the concern that your school community or your administration might not be familiar with contemporary art or they might not think that this is what they expect art to be or what art what type of art they would expect you to share with children and i think the solution for that would be to teach your school community along with your students about contemporary art so putting up bulletin boards in the classroom that tell a story about what's happening in the art room can really help um, let your school community Do you know about boring, um, photographs of the students working, photographs of the um, artists that I'm sharing with my students, and um, I think that 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 really helps us <laughs> really helps tell a story about um, what's happening in my art studio. Um, I also sometimes put up just like a big word or a big question. So these are all ways that you can um, help share contemporary art with your school community. Um, next slide, please. Um, another fear that, um, that you might have about sharing contemporary art with your students is um, maybe you don't know where to start. And if that's the case, then you've come to the right place and taken the first step by showing up to this webinar here with us. Um, exposing yourself to new art and new ways of thinking about teaching art gives you a fresh new perspective. Looking at new art can be exciting and help you refresh old lessons. Sharing contemporary art with your students can help you have a lively conversation about art and get them excited about making art. My students love learning about contemporary art. It's exciting for them to see artists who are making art now, to um, hear them talk about their art, to see them in their studios. And it's exciting for children to see adult artists making art and experimenting like we do in the art studio. So this is one of my students who loves um, learning about contemporary art and um, can we play him saying play the video of him oh. actually I'm not sure if you could hear that video, um, but uh, if, if you couldn't, he said that it allows you to think in many different ways because sometimes people just have one perspective of art and it allows them to grow from that perspective and change their art and make it stronger. Right. Thank you.
Well said, Julia and Julian. That was great. Um, so our next question is for Natovian, and that is, how has contemporary art changed or impacted your teaching practice? So uh, I started using contemporary art as a tool for keeping my students' work relevant and also keeping their work original. Um, here's one example of a unit I did in my classroom. And I show my students the artist Ronald Jackson, and he makes artwork um, using nature and he shows his family's heritage and his connection to rural areas in the South, um, and of course how he grew up. And um, I asked my students to think about their connection to their communities and to think about how they might change their environment um, to show the beauty of nature or highlight an environment. And um, before teaching contemporary art, I feel like I would have taken that big idea, nature, and I just would have had my students maybe paint a landscape or um, just something showing nature with maybe paint or old pastels. Um, but by showing a contemporary artist, it really helps shape the unit um, to being more about the student and about the student's perspective um, and having them reflect on the world around them. And you can go to the next slide. So a lot of times as teachers, and I'm sure you all feel this way, um, I feel like I'm more of a psychologist teaching life skills first and then art um, comes second. And in doing that, contemporary art has really helped me connect to my students and um, helps me keep them inspired and um, give them new ideas to how they can problem solve a lot of the tough situations that they're experiencing in their life right now. Um, so when I teach contemporary art, I'm not just teaching about the artists, I really am teaching and selling the artist's work, but also their life story. And because um, I want to speak to my students' hearts and I want them to see the connections and see how an artist has overcome something. And contemporary artists make work about real life um, stuff and real life situations. So here's one example in my classroom. This is Leo Lu Simbanjo. And when I teach design, I show his work. And he uses a lot of patterns and um, lines. And you can see in this photo here, he's wearing a jacket that um, he painted. And he is from Africa and he was a civil rights activist and lawyer. And he decided to quit his job and become an artist. And he went from um, painting on the street to literally painting on Beyonce's face and working for Nike and um, Starbucks. So when I teach about this artist, I really hype up that artist's life story. and. Um, he said he's been inspired by his mom having all these tattoos on her arms and her legs and um, taking a crayon and doing rubbings um, on his kitchen floor and his walls. Um, so when I'm teaching about the artist, I really want my students to think about those connections and how they are um, maybe doing the same things as that artist does and really hype up the artist. Um, so in this slide and in the next one, I'm also showing examples of how I encourage my students and hype them up in their art making, whether it's asking for their autograph or um, chanting their name like over and over to get to encourage them. You can move to the next slide. Thank you. So I also, um, when I'm teaching contemporary art, it reminds me that students are also contemporary artists and that my students are just as important as the contemporary artists in the world right now. Um, you can move to the next slide. Thank you. So in this slide, I am showing that contemporary art has not only just changed my overall teaching, but it's changed how I teach and observe art history myself. Um, so I show when I teach about a contemporary artist, I also will show, um, I'm sorry, when I teach about art history or I teach about an art movement, I'm also showing contemporary artists. And I do that because I found it really keeps my students engaged um, and it really keeps them um, really interested in kind of that buy-in that I want them to, to see in the artist's work. And this is Josh and I'm showing um, his picture because teaching contemporary art also change the tools I use in my classroom. I feel like now I incorporate more technology and a lot of the tools that contemporary artists are using right now. Um, so this was a unit uh, or a lesson on um, abstraction and how color can be used to create depth and work. Um, and then we did this on our devices. And on the left is a picture of my artwork. And I'm showing this because contemporary art has, um, or being a contemporary artist, 
and teaching really go hand in hand. And I feel like when I'm creating work, I'm also keeping my students passionate. And when I'm creating artwork, I want my students to see that. I want them to see that I'm a contemporary artist and I want them to remember that they, again, like they are contemporary artists too. Um, and you can, you can go to the next slide. And next, Marie will address the question, what methods have you used to successfully introduce contemporary art to your students? So for me, it's a lot about choosing what artists to show and thinking about what is going to be relevant for students. The better I know my students, the better I can reach them. When I first started at my school, I was an outsider to the community and the school had a very art history based curriculum. So starting with hyper local artists, so what's in the immediate community of our school, like Isaiah Zagar, whose murals, mosaics cover almost all of South Philly, was a way for me to connect with my students and their daily experiences. Um, I've also used artists like Kay Healy, who also lives in South Philly, to invite their curiosity by showing them things that they might relate to them and their childhood experiences and pique their interests. We looked at her work and then found our own stories and um, came up with what was special to us, what do we collect, and then students brought that into the classroom so that I could get to know them as well. I also like to bridge art history and contemporary art, like Ms. Hovian, and I'll choose artists like uh, Roberto Lugo, and he's an artist who grew up in Philly, and now he's a nationally recognized ceramic artist, and he's really inspiring because he's got that story of growing up in a neighborhood like Kensington, and now he's a, a professor and doing amazing work. Um, so whenever possible, I like to try to connect the past and the present to make what happened in the past relevant to my students' lives. Since I work in upper elementary, my students are in that awkward age of trying to figure out who they are and they need to have their interest peaked. So I'll choose surprising images like Cindy Sherman's clown series to capture their attention and their interest and also let them know that playing with identity is okay to do in their artwork. I try to select artists that challenge students' notion of what is art and expand their point of view. Next slide, please. So some concrete things I do in the classroom to introduce contemporary art is first of all to start with what we have around us and I'm very lucky to live in an urban area that is full of public art and so I've asked students to research the public art in their neighborhoods and then bring it back into school and that way they become the experts on what is around them and they see that art is part of everyday life. I've also try to let the walls speak. So the images here are what I would like to say to my students every day, like you need to be looking and it's okay to be weird and it's okay to fail, just try again. But I've also passed over the walls to my students. So one of the things we do at the beginning of the year is I'll put out all of my posters and then they get to choose what goes up on the walls. And then I have them adopt a poster for their classroom and so that they can take that back. And that way art is part of their everyday experience in their classroom too. Next slide, please. We watch a lot of videos about contemporary artists speaking in person about their work. And my students really respond to hearing the students' voices, sorry, the artists' voices and their points of view. Um, and I try to, use those artists to model how should we work in the classroom. Artists collaborate and they plan and they research. And so I try to have my children do that as well. They collaborate together, they brainstorm ideas together, and they research into what they want to make, just like artists do. I think it's also important to have your art room set up in as an authentic way as possible so that students have access to materials and feel comfortable with experimentation and play. I've had a shift from focusing on product to focusing more on the process when I brought contemporary art into the classroom. Next slide, please. So 
So for me, it's really important to use contemporary art in my teaching because I feel that students need to see themselves and the world they're, um, they live in reflected in the art they see in the classroom. And especially since I'm working with young adolescents who are seeking examples of how to live and act, what they should believe in, and how to set goals for themselves. So by seeing and hearing living artists responding to the world they live in, today's society and today's issues is crucial for their development. Thank you. So our final from the first group of questions is for Emily. And uh, this question is, did you face any challenges when adding contemporary art to your curriculum and how did you overcome them? Hello, so I'm gonna to talk to you about three challenges that I think uh, would come up for many teachers. And these are ongoing challenges that I see myself um, continually working through um, in terms of putting contemporary art in the classroom. So the first one is um, challenge one, curriculum absent of contemporary art. So my first teaching job 17 years ago was in Arizona. And in that situation, there weren't any art teachers before me. So I didn't have, um, I didn't have contemporary art in the, in the program because there wasn't a program, <laughs> but it was this nice experience of being able to play an experiment very early on in my career. And so from the get go, I was able to you know, look at who do I love or who's in the local area and start embedding them into my curriculum. And so I did that. And then I moved around a lot. So I moved to Massachusetts. And from there, I went to a very different school setting, one that was um, very large. I was at three schools and the working conditions were really tough. And in that situation, contemporary art for me was a way in with the kids and the community when I really like was floating around in many ways and didn't have an end. So it, it was a quick way to bond and connect and feel and hear the students' stories. Um, and then fast forward to now, I'm at my current school for seven years and the model that I inherited was an arts integration model. So the classroom teachers come up with um, unit and then the art teacher before me had come up with ways to work with them and incorporate the art and so contemporary art really wasn't in there and so I felt like it was my job to find a way um, this was my challenge how can I add contemporary art into this type of a setting and so in some cases I had to peel away some of the work that was done before me but in other cases it was about embedding um, the new in with the old and finding ways that a contemporary artist could really work with this particular unit um, so that's sort of how i'm working now there's some new lessons that are, are just coming from me and i'm peeling away stuff and then also um, working with what was and i think that um, is something that probably a lot of teachers could kind of jump off of um, and in the images here, I just wanted to share um, the image on the left um, is an example of the students responding to a local artist. Every year I bring in a local artist um, and they respond so positively to that. And then both images are really a reaction to collaboration and students' marks um, and, and their response to the marks that came before them. Um, and I think that contemporary artists um, are just, they're just flooded with examples of cool kinds of collaboration. So um, sharing that kind of ways of working with the students is valuable. All right, challenge two. <laughs> so for challenge two, um, discussions around contemporary art take time. Um, so over the years I've noticed, and I've talked with this group too, so I, um, I think a lot of teachers are going through this, um, that if you want to go deeper, you have to give it time. And so facilitating connections that students make with an artist, allowing for the discussions to go on longer and allowing for there to be um, more back and forth between students, um, rather than feeling like you need to accomplish so many things within one year. I like to look at it as one lesson is really like a whole slew of lessons 
and you can really introduce contemporary art throughout the learning and the lesson. And um, the example that I have up here on the um, left is an example of just that. Like it wasn't just like, let's look at um, artists in the beginning of this family structure unit, but we were looking at artists throughout. And um, some of the artists that I shared were Byron Kim and the students looked at um, his Schenectady piece, which is a large tiled um, image of skin tones. And then they were able to talk about their own skin tones and really kind of investigate that. And the other artist that we looked at is Catherine Opie and starting to talk about family structures. And in this particular photo from Catherine Opie, she shares um, what a um, gay family unit might look like versus one with a mom and a dad. So having those conversations because they do reflect the kids who are in my room is important. Um, okay, let's go to the challenge three. So teaching art with contemporary art can mean that you need to consider process, community engagement, and reimagining your spaces. So I inherited a space in the school that I'm at now that was full of a lot of stuff. And I found the challenge was like, you know, I wanted the students to be able to do so many different kinds of things because that's what we see in contemporary art. So I felt that the stuff was kind of in the way. <laughs> and so one of my um, goals, and it still is now, is that I'm sort of peeling back and allowing for more opportunities for the students to carve out working spaces and material access. And um, I think that's also uh, something I hear from a lot of other art teachers when I talk to them. It's like many times you're going into a building that has, you know, an art teacher and an art, te art teacher's, uh, you know, world still living in there so how do you um how do you open it up and so that is something i've been working on and if you look at the images the natural material image on the left um this is a great example of um the students thinking about the process and and diving into the fact that like this is not about what's going to come at the end because we went through so many phases of uh, working in a whole group and photographing and in in this image here you'll see them documenting it um, and then you know destroying it and um, so I think uh, imagining not only what it looks like in the process but in the exhibit form too um, to kind of share with the larger community uh, the importance of contemporary art and what it really looks like so um, so that's challenge three. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. All right. So a very pressing question is, how do I get started? And Maureen's going to take that one. Yes. Hello, everyone. So um, how do we get started teaching with and using contemporary art? Um, well, I think that um, all of the panelists have one really important thing in common, which is that we've taken the time to expose ourselves to as much contemporary art as we possibly can. Um, you can't teach with contemporary art if you're not familiar with contemporary artists. So um, taking the time to look around at art and then start to connect those art and artists to your own teaching practices is how we got started. Um, and actually attending this webinar is a perfect way to start because you're seeing some really great artists and some examples of how to use those artists. So looking at contemporary art is fun because there's always new artists making art in fascinating ways. Um, if you're wondering where to get started for searching or resources, I'd like to share a few with you now um, that I recommend as really great starting points. So I use these resources all the time throughout the year and during the summer as I'm planning lessons. And I know Emma is going to speak more specifically about Art 21, but I'd just like to mention Art 21 Live because it's one of my particular favorites. Art 21 Live is a 24 hours a day streaming of Art 21 content. And I love this because um, I can watch this when I don't have students in the room. Um, I can preview videos that I wouldn't necessarily seek out on my own because they just kind of pop up randomly. And I always learn about a new artist or see a clip that I want to share with my students when I watch Art 21 Live. So that is a great place to start. Um, 
it's always enlightening and it's always on. So um, I definitely suggest checking that out. Um, there are also lots of contemporary art museums that have really great resources that are dedicated to kids specifically. Um, and I really love Tate Modern's Tate for Kids website because it's really interactive. There are artists' um, biographies on there that are written specifically for kids, so definitely check that out. Um, another category of great resources for learning about contemporary artists are contemporary art blogs. So um, Colossal is one that I really love. It started here in Chicago. And these are great because they often highlight contemporary artists that are less established, but equally amazing. And art blogs have easy search tools. So if you're wondering um, uh, about artists who use fibers or clay, you can often just search that up in the search tool and then you'll get a list of artists that you could kind of peruse and see if any speak to you. Um, you can also subscribe to newsletters on all of these resources and have contemporary art delivered right to your inbox. And since we have to check our email anyway on a daily basis, it kind of forces um, me specifically to look at new art when I might otherwise be busy with school and prep. So these are all really great resources. And once you begin to broaden your understanding of contemporary artists, then, um, and you know how to continually access new artists, then you could start to think about incorporating these artists into your teaching. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. So you know your students best. Um, and some questions that might be great to start with are, where does it make sense to infuse contemporary art into your art curriculum? What are your students' interests? What materials do you have that are available for your students? How can sharing contemporary art help them develop their own creative thinking? You also know your teaching best. Are there areas of your teaching that you feel could use some revitalization? Um, these are all really good questions to contemplate as you start planning to teach with more contemporary art. Um, it doesn't always make sense to share contemporary artists, um, so don't force it if you don't feel like there's a need. But when there is a need, start by considering the interests of your students. And definitely, you want to consider seeking out multiple contemporary artists that your kids can connect and respond to, rather than just picking one artist and showing their work and having them mimic that work. So I'm gonna use my students as an example here. Um, I'm a choice-based art teacher, and I often notice that my students make art, as you can see here, that they wear directly on their bodies. So I might see this and then start to think about artists that make art in similar ways. Sharing contemporary artists is one way that I can validate my students' artistic choices. I could also share contemporary artists before they make art as a way to inspire or suggest new ways of making art that can be worn. And sometimes I'll share contemporary artists as a way to broaden their general idea of what art can be. And this is why it's so important to stay current and just continue to expose yourself to as much contemporary art as possible so that you just have more and more artists to draw from when you're creating your lessons. Next slide, please. Thank you. So these are some contemporary artists that I've shared with my students. On the left is a still from Creative Growth Center's fashion show. And after watching a few clips um, with my students, um, they really were able to see how much time and persistence it takes to design and make something that can be worn. And they were able to see this and have this discussion because I was sharing a video rather than one still image. And we often talk about artistic behaviors in the art studio. And since contemporary artists are current in making art today, there's a lot of videos of these artists working in their studios or being interviewed. And those can all be used to demonstrate artistic practices or behaviors that we're trying to teach our students. Um, in the center is Cyrus Kabiru, and he's an artist who designs fantastical eyewear. My students love his work. Um, and he uses all recycled objects. And he uses materials that are available to him in much the same way that my students use recycled objects that they bring in from home. Um, and then on the right is a still from one of Nick Cave's sound suit performances. And my students really respond well to his work. It's very musical, performative, with a whole lot of dress up and Halloween thrown in there, which they really love. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this summer is actually turning out 
uh, to be a great time to do online research because museums and organizations are putting even more really great content onto their websites since we are teaching from home. Um, there's more artist talks, virtual tours, and just a lot of really great content right now. And every summer, I make it a personal goal to learn about new artists. So I think um, um, trying to kind of collect new artists is a great way to start. I think if it's nice out, grab your lounge chair, make it fun, a lemonade, and enjoy some seasons of Art 21. Or you could watch some episodes of PBS The Art Assignment and actually do the assignments and make art and see what it feels like to be a student again. And just really dedicate time to learning about contemporary artists. It's so much fun. And then once the new school year begins, you've planned some really cool lessons that include contemporary artists that your kids will love. And Setting goals is important. I know I'm doing this for myself, so just have fun learning about contemporary artists. Thank you. Well said, Maureen. Thank you so much. That was very thorough. Uh, so we are gonna transition to the question and answer portion. Um, so we have a handful already in the Q&A chat, but I just wanted to remind everyone that if you have a question, we encourage you to type it into that box and then Rob and I will be asking some. So to okay. kick us off, uh, we have a question from Donna, which is, is it any easier to engage reluctant students with contemporary art? I think this is an open one. So if, if someone wants to jump in, I think Maureen has her hand up, or sorry, Marie. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because as I said, like, if you choose artists that are relevant to students, the more you get to know your students and find out what their interests are, the better choices you can make to find the artist that's going to connect with that student. I'm, I've shown, a, I'm going to refer back to that Roberto Lugo. There's a video on PBS about him and, and the moment he talks about his experience as a person of color. I had students just riveted students that wouldn't normally be paying attention, suddenly they were riveted to the words he was saying. So, absolutely. Anyone else wanna add on? And I think someone else said this um, in their presentation, but um, I feel like if you are noticing um, how your students are naturally creating art, I think that there's a lot of opportunities um, to kind of find contemporary artists that are working in that same way. And I think that that makes children really excited to see like, hey, I like to experiment in this way. And then this established adult artist also likes to work in the same way. And I think that that really amps up engagement. And then just to touch on what Marie said, I think subject matter is really what is the buy-in for my students and any, um, because we all have students that just seem like they're not um, engaged or they just don't want to make art. Um, and then I always use those for opportunities to check and see, okay, like, why is the student not engaged? Like, is it something, um, is it like how I'm teaching it? Or is it what I'm teaching? And most, more often than not, I found that it's, it's what I'm teaching. So then I always go back to that student and I, and I think about um, what I know about them. I ask them questions and then I circle back in my research um, and I find artists that might be going through um, similar things as that student or might have overcome um, an issue in their life as that student. And then again, like when I talk about selling the artist story, like that's really the reason that I'm doing that is because I want my student um, to kind of see the opportunities or see the potential, not just for creating, but also overcoming those, those obstacles. And then also instead of presenting artwork at the beginning, you know, maybe working in a theme and then seeing where kids are at and then choosing an artist specifically for them. Like this is your artist to work with. And then that engages them even further. Special. It does sometimes. Oh, I'm so glad you said that Marie. Sometimes like I will write the artist down or like fold it on a sheet of paper and I like give it to the student. I'm like, I, this is for you. Like I need you to look up this person or do. And then they do and they come back and they're just so excited. And then class is so much better. Um, because you know they feel special so that's a or great I'll see, you know, or I'll see something that they're making and like oh that reminds me of this artist and I'll look it up quick on my phone and show them like fuck look at this what they're doing you're doing this, just the same thing mm -hmm. and I think because we're remote learning not this is the last thing I'm going to say um I know something 
we're all struggling with is feeling really disconnected from our students. Um, so I've been going back and thinking about some students' work or something I know my students really like, and I send them messages like on our um, learning management system, like, oh, like check out this artist. And they love it so much. And they, I feel like they feel like they're not forgotten because you know, I don't get to see them as much as their classroom teacher. Um, but that's something that you might have fun doing um, during this, this weird time. And I also think that um, contemporary artists um, being alive and working currently, um, you are able to show them things like artists actually working in their studios, actually thinking through a problem or a process. And I feel like um, showing those to your students in class and then having a conversation about that and kind of comparing it to how we work or I think it, that all of those things just brings life to um, your art studio when you are able to share contemporary artists with your students. Okay, so I'm gonna jump. I think this is a really interesting question. So this will be an open one as well, but um, it's has to do with working with colleagues. So the question is, um, as you've developed your curriculum with contemporary art and have collected more student examples, more student engagement, et cetera, has it become easier to have conversations with your colleagues about teaching with contemporary art? And uh, the asker has several teachers in her district who are against teaching beyond Pinterest crafts or appropriated projects. Some have become a little more interested, but um, have, have you been able to bring any of your colleagues along? And how'd you do that? I think, Maureen? Um, I think leading by example is a great way to start. And if you're interested in teaching with contemporary art um, and it's going well for you and your students, sharing those positive experiences is a great way um, to communicate with colleagues. And I think um, that if you if you can share your experiences like that if um if you can show your successes that that is a great way to start that conversation with colleagues i i also think oh sorry marie um i also think that um spotlighting like the thinking that you're doing in your classroom like really um you know putting up presentations in the hallway that show like the questions that students are asking and um, that it's more than just creating something that has an end product that you're problem solvers. And then I also think whenever you show passion for something, it's kind of contagious. So if you're excited about something and you're sharing that with other people, then they're more likely to join along. But then also do the same for them, you know, ask them what are they doing, find out what's happening in their curriculum. And if you see, some connections you can offer, offer it. So just having a spirit of sharing and without being judgmental is, and will make it easier. Yeah, and I'll add on to, I feel like as educators, we wanna promote rigor and we wanna promote um, like those critical thinking skills and like real life skills that students can take into the world with them. And um, when showing contemporary artists or just any art project in general, um, it has to be more like the other teachers said, it has to be more than the end product. And it really is about the process. And uh, again, the beautiful thing about contemporary art, and I feel like a big buy-in is the artists will oftentimes talk and think, um, or they'll talk their way through like how they got to a certain um, outcome or they got to a certain product. And if you look at even art standards and I know what's expected of me um, in my curriculum, like a lot of those same questions and like they, they pop up, like it's a lot of those same conversations. Um, so it's a great way, like not even just for that buy-in for the students and um, the teachers, but also I think administration and like my, my faculty um, that I work with too. I think Emily was trying to answer too. Yay. So I just wanted to share a quick story because right now we're teaching um, what we're calling home-based learning. And um, the way it's set up at my school is we're using a program called Seesaw and I'm a co-teacher with all the other teachers. And in some ways, some really cool things are happening because the classroom teachers are seeing more than what they might see when I put up an exhibit. 
and they are shooting me messages and they are excited and they are watching the contemporary art performance and and it's like it's been a really cool outcome of what's going on right now like there's so many challenges in the way that we're teaching now but this has been very exciting in terms of connecting with colleagues and so i think you know as we move forward like let's say we go back to our classrooms it's, i feel like there's a way maybe this whole video approach can be embedded into like the next whatever <laughs> so. that's great anyone else want to add in that's wonderful I also just wanted to say hi to Jennifer. Jennifer is um, who Jennifer posed that last question, which is such a wonderful question. Is also an R21 Educators alumni. So that was really great to see your name pop up. Hi, Jennifer. Um, so I have a next question um, from Megan. Um, Megan asks if we can have more specific examples. So, so far we've had some great ones just to remind everyone from Julia talked about portraiture and using contemporary artists. Uh, and Natovia talked about nature, so taking a traditional nature unit and kind of blowing it up uh, with more contemporary artists. Uh, so Megan wants to know if there are some ways or some more specific ways that you engage students with contemporary art. Uh, is it only BTS? Do you have fun games or activities that you suggest? Uh, I think anything more specific would be really helpful for Megan. Yeah, Marie, it looks like you're raising your hand. So finding different ways to engage with an image is good. Um, one I use is I'll stand at the door when kids enter with a stack of post-it notes and then they grab one as they go in and there'll be a question on the board for them to answer and then they get to go slap their post-it note up on the board on top of the image. So that way every kid's engaged, they've all answered a question and they got to do something interactive with the image and it just builds up some excitement for what's happening in the room. And then, or another thing is I'll have a postcard or a poster out on each table with a paper that every kid has to write on um, to like note things or, or answer questions. And that way they're talking in small groups about the works and then they, they build up the knowledge about the image that they get to share out with the rest of the class. So I guess that's a little more like BTS, but, um, and then finally, one would be to just work with themes. So I think several people have said, like, we're not just here to copy famous artworks. It's time to examine what artists are doing and thinking about and modeling a way of researching or a way of practicing or a way of playing or experimenting. And then how can we apply that action in our own lives? Um, so I've had a a recent one where I shared work by Pepon Osorio, who um, makes little shrines and installations about family and people. And then my last project for my eighth graders this year was create an artwork that documents a childhood memory. So they've got the model of someone who is working with memories, but then they had lots of different ways to approach that. Anyone else want to add in an activity or specific example? Yeah, I'll add in um, another example of a unit. And I didn't get to talk too much about this one, but I had some pictures on it. Um, so again, when I'm incorporating or combining art history with contemporary artists, um, I have this unit where I teach my students about murals. And I show them um, the artist Diego Rivera. And then I also show them the artist Greg Mike. Um, and then that unit is about perspective. So we're drawing a building from perspective, one point, two point, or three point. And we um, are thinking about a special message that we want to send to the world. And then I talk about the message that Diego Rivera would, uh, was sending to the world when he um, was alive. And then I talk about the message that Greg Mike, the contemporary artist, um, what message that he wants to send to the world. Um, and then students, we come up with their own. And um, some examples have been, um, you don't need makeup to look you're beautiful to look beautiful or um, keep pushing on like you are a problem solver like it's all positive and I love it's one of my favorite units because um, when you hang them up everyone is seeing it and it's doing the same thing that a mural would do um, even though I don't have um, access to actually creating a mural right now for with my students um, also um, going along with what Emily uh, Emily brought up uh, distance learning right now and I feel like um, for a lot of my short videos I've been making for distance learning, I've been using contemporary art just for um, 
like an idea starter for um, a drawing lesson. Like one of them, I showed a work by Oliver Eliasson, um, all about shadows and light. And I showed them um, a few pieces and then I invited them to go and make a shadow collection from all around their house. So they went and found all of the shadows and documented it um, with crayons. And it was, it was really fun and the students really enjoyed it. Another one that I shared recently was um, work by the artist Doho Sa, who does a lot of work about homes. And um, there's a quote in um, his, uh, in like season two of Art 21, when he was interviewed that said that he wanted to carry his home with him all the time, like a snail. And um, so I asked the students to kind of think about that. And if you could like illustrate this, like, and we had just had a, uh, I just posed a few questions about that. and. The responses that I got back were all pretty interesting. Um, so those are some ways I've been using it. Okay, look, maybe we'll do one or two more questions. Um, I've got a question. Uh, do you have any ideas for teaching <clears throat> socially engaged artistic practice in the elementary art room? So interactive or socially engaged artwork. I can give an example of one. Um, I was noticing my kids were having some trouble with bullying and interactions. And I thought if they could do something where they saw that they had a lot more in common than they thought they did. Uh, maybe that would help alleviate the, the idea, the problem that they were having. So I made all of these charts with grids. And then at the top, I put a question like, do you have a brother or sister? Or do you like them? You know, things that would, they could easily find things that they had in common. And if they could answer yes to any of the questions, they would just color in a box on the grid. And so the kids got to move around the room and color in on this paste paper that they were sharing all around the room. And then as it grew, we started to see that they, they had a lot in common. <laughs> and, you know, I posted all of these in the hallway and I don't, I don't know if it actually had any real effect on the bullying problem or not. I like to think it did, but, um, Something where the kids get to interact and collaborate is good. Or if they put out something in the world where they have to, like other people have to interact and work on it, um, is a good challenge to set for them. I think also just working collaboratively in any way where the young kids have to respond to one another and take the time to listen to one another's opinions or artistic decisions that they've made and kind of work together is a great way, um, a really great activity to do that. And um, using artists who also collaborate or showing artists who collaborate is a great way to kind of demonstrate that artistic behavior. I'll also jump in and say, I think that it is simple as a lot of the panels have talked about before, knowing your own school community and thinking about artists that might be different than that community and showing artists that really can just broaden students' worlds and show a different perspective. Uh, I think it can be, for lack of a better term, very simple to start and then you could go bigger. Great. Does anyone else wanna add on to that question? If not, I can ask another. Um, great. Well, so this is one from Sarah earlier on, and she asks, uh, where do you find videos to share with students in regards to sharing artists' stories and information? She'd like more recommendations. We've talked a lot about Art21, but I also follow a lot of artists on Instagram um, and also galleries on Instagram and see what they post. Yeah, Marie, I'm, I do the exact same thing. I 
I follow and look for artists on Instagram and then I just look for their websites later um, because I found that I, I really just want to hear from the artists like why they're making art and how they're making art. Um, so once I have the name, that's usually just when I Google them and just find um, anything I can from that artist. Um, but I will look at um, hashtags on Instagram. So like hashtag contemporary art or like, um, or like hashtag, um, oh, what's one that I use? Like community art or like anything like of the topic that I'm looking for. And, um, and I feel like that's because like as artists, we, we wanna establish like a digital presence in the world. And that's kind of where everyone is, I feel like is on Instagram or social media. So that's just been the quickest way for me. Um, and then you can start to use some of those other resources like Art21 or, um, or certain magazines. I also feel was, like what Maureen was talking about earlier, just like continuing to look at art, art, art blogs. Um, also, like when you have an artist in mind and then you're just like Natovian just said, and then you're just Googling them. And then sometimes really interesting things will come up like a museum that interviewed that person when they had a show a while ago or I don't know what, but just I think just always keeping an eye out for things that you could possibly use in your classroom. I, I always bookmark and save things when I come across something interesting and I'm like, I know I'll be able to use this someday, but maybe not today. So keeping your eyes peeled. I also Emily, stay, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Emily. Yeah. I just wanted to add real quick, um, it kind of goes off of what Julia said, but just go like going to an exhibit, it just like sparks, I mean, if you like the show, so many searches and so many things you can bring back to your classroom and I've been doing that a lot lately and it's just so fun. So that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I also want to say how important it is to connect with other art teachers. So I am fortunate to be in the Art21 Educator Program and get to connect with all those wonderful people. Um, but I also have a group here in Philadelphia that I, I work with. Um, and also my PAEA and NAEA organizations. You know, the more you can get ideas from other people, we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, one video source I'll just add in, because I only discovered it fairly recently, is uh, NSICA, the National Council on Education for Ceramic Arts. Mm -hmm. They have um, some really awesome videos of their featured artists. They have a few every year. There's actually a really great one with uh, Roberto Lugo in it, which is really awesome. It's like a short speech, but it's like really inspiring 15 minutes of, of time. It's great. Um, okay, so let's see. We're at about four o'clock, so I think we're going to wrap up the questions and move on to our next piece. Great. Well, I also just wanted to thank all the panelists for doing such a great job. I think they gave a fantastic introduction to R21 that I couldn't have done. Um, so bravo to all of them. Uh, for those of you that don't know R21, again, uh, we're a nonprofit organization that's dedicated um, to promoting the work and words of artists. Um, and we do that through a variety of ways, uh, primarily though through our documentary series, uh, including the long running art in the 21st century. Uh, some of you that have used R21 in your classrooms have probably already watched this or used it already with your students, which is great. Uh, and we are so lucky in that Art in the 21st Century season 10, which get excited, will be premiering in the coming year. Uh, so we don't have a premiere date yet, but when we do, you better mark your calendars and watch it and share it with all your friends and family. Um, so that is, I think, probably the highlight to look forward to. Uh, and the other things I wanna mention have been alluded to by the fellow presenters, um, but really just that Art21 has an incredible wealth of resources available for free on our website. Uh, so I put it in the chat before, but it's art21.org. Number one thing available to you, obviously, are the films themselves. Uh, so actually, Tony, do you mind going back to Maureen's last slide? It had a picture of creative growth. It was a woman in a nice dress. If that's possible. If not, you'll just remember. Okay, you're just gonna remember. There was a really nice picture on uh, uh, Maureen's slide that was of a woman in a dress at a fashion show. Um, that actually is an Art21 video um, that has documented this great fashion show at Creative Growth Art Center. Oh, there it is. Oh, thanks. Uh, so the image on the left uh, is from the Creative Growth 
Art Center um, Fashion Show, which is a yearly event out in San Francisco. Uh, so you can watch a full short video, it's under 10 minutes, about the preparation and then the execution of that fashion show, which I think is just a great tool to use with your students. Uh, and then also on the right is an image uh, from Nick Cave in our Chicago episode, which premiered in season eight of Art in the 21st Century. Uh, so if you don't know Nick Cave's work, I highly suggest that after this, your homework is to go to r21.org and watch the whole film. Uh, it's really great and gives a great uh, window into his process uh, and motivations. Uh, so thank you, Tony, for going. You can go back to the R21 slide now. Thank you. Oh, that was great, very fast. Um, wonderful. So beyond the films are our educator guides. So for every episode of Art in the 21st Century, there is an educator guide that accompanies it. Uh, so you can see an example of one for Jordan Castile on the right. Um, these are chock full of background information, questions, activities to get you started. So if you're really starting out and you just think, I don't know where to begin, please check out one of our educator guides and they will help you along that path. Um, I also should say that there are a plethora of articles written by fellow educators on our website, including some of the panelists that you heard from today. Uh, that go into more about their process of selecting artists, how they choose them, what they do with those artists in their classrooms. Uh, so I really suggest you read through those. Uh, and finally, I'll just promote that you should sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you'll see a nice bulleted list in front of you of all the things that we offer. I'm not going to go into depth about them today, but if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll hear about them. Uh, we send one out every month that's dedicated to education and has great, you know, updates on new, um, educator guides, new films, new ideas for you to use in your classroom. Um, so please do that. And finally, I'll just say that if you use any R21 materials with your students to please let us know. We wanna hear from you. So you can tag us on social media or send us an email. We just love to hear how our materials are used in schools. So with that, I'll transition um, to talking more nitty gritty about contemporary artists. We thought it'd be great to end with five you know, hard and fast recommendations for people you should check out after this. Uh, so Marie, do you wanna start us off? Sure, I've already given a lot of love to Roberta Lugo because I love how he combines craft and pop culture. Barbara Kruger is amazing because she asks those big questions and there's a whole video on Art21 all about those big questions. Uh, Jordan Castile is so good for portraiture because she really sees people. Um, I'm in love with Swoon because of how she does myth and story and uh, nothing's like a good task party from Oliver Herring. Hi, so um, Christoph Neiman is a fantastic designer and illustrator. Um, the kids respond really well to his drawings of objects. Andy Goldsworthy works with um, objects from nature, but also patterns and patience and lots of artistic behaviors you can talk about with him. Chantelle Martin, um, there are some great videos of her talking about finding her personal style in her art making. Um, Mark Bradford works with paper and uses paper as kind of as like a painting material, layering them in interesting ways. And um, Lucy Sparrow is a felt artist. Um, she creates entire shopping centers entirely made out of felt. So this is great for like expanding an idea or creating a collection. Hey, so, oh, am I muted? Oh no, I'm not, okay. So I recommend um, Devin Allen, who is a photographer from Baltimore. Um, he got really famous from um, photographing the uprising in Baltimore um, some years ago. So if you wanna show um, like people coming together or you wanna show like a movement or like some civil rights, you can look him up. Um, Bisa Butler is amazing and she is um, great if you wanna show or create a lesson about important people or, um, and then use like collage or like found materials. Um, so she creates all these portraits um, using all fabric and fiber arts. Um, if you, I have uh, Lucia Hierro down here. I don't know if it's cut off on your screen. It might, cause I don't see that. But um, she's great for identity and um, she shows a lot of work about like her family and important foods and she creates installations um, and also takes pictures and um, enlarges those images. Um, I have Afio Richardson. I think that name also might be cut off. I don't know if you can see it, but Afio Richardson is um, an artist. She's actually really popular and she's done work for Black Panther and Marvel. 
um, and um, I believe also like DC Comics and worked with that, like illustrating Batman. So I also try to show artists that are just working and um, doing things that kids see like every day. Um, so she's great if you want to do like an illustration or character design um, unit. And then I have Hassan Hajaj over here on the left, um, who is great also for identity. Um, and um, if you want to do a unit on um, having students like photograph someone that's important to them or photographing someone in their like natural habitat or where they live, um, he's an amazing artist to look at too. I, these are all artists that I've um, shared with my students. Um, I think Doho Sa is a wonderful artist if you're wanting to explore the concept of home. Um, Sarah Z, I've shown a lot of times when we've made um, temporary sculptures with found objects in the classroom. Um, there's some really great videos of her on Art21. Um, Oliver Eliason is just a very fun artist to show if you're exploring light and shadow. I recommend checking out Art21 videos of him. Um, Mark Dion. Um, for collections. All kids have some sort of collection, so he's a fun one to show for that and also for exploring nature as well. And then Alex DeCorte um, is a fan favorite with a lot of my students. Um, for just exploring make-believe, I recommend Googling him. You're muted. Hello. All right. Like Julia, I um, also have shared all these with my students and they've been, they were big hits. Um, so Carrie James Marshall, if you're looking into like communities and wanting to go there. Um, Ju Young Che is an artist that is rather new to me, but I just shared her fantasy work with my students and got back some wonderful varieties of puppet shows and, you know, narrative drawings and all kinds of fun things. Um, so she, she's awesome. Um, Ellen Atsui, great for um, recycled materials and excellent for the time since we're working from home so much of us. And um, I agree with Julia, Oliver Ellison. Um, just a lot of awe when you're looking at his light and shadow works. And then Elizabeth Murray, uh, she, my students love that she uses some really funny words when she talks about her art too. So she uses things like loopy forms and her colors are really loud and there's a lot of emotion and expression. So if you're interested in that. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for sharing those really exciting artists with us. We would love for you, for all of our um, attendees today to share with us your favorite contemporary artists to show and inspire elementary students. If you um, share with us by tagging one of our hashtags there, you can see on the screen by Friday, May 29th, May 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern, we'll enter you um, in a drawing to win a free subscription to School Arts Magazine. Um, one of the reasons we picked School Arts Magazine for this was because there's an amazing section in the middle um, that always features a contemporary artist. It is written by um, Rob Sandagata and our um, curator and historian Carl Cole and actually Emily Sandagata's work has been featured recently so you can check that out too. Um, so definitely head over um, and check that out and share with us so we can we can enter you in the drawing. Uh, next slide please. I'd also like to invite you to attend more future weekly webinars. Next week, we'll be chatting with Jane Dalton, an art educator who has been successfully infusing mindfulness practices into art education for over 30 years. She'll share the philosophical underpinnings to mindful art education and walk us through two hands-on activities that are, sure, that are sure to make you and your students feel more centered and calm, which I think everyone could use all the time. Um, later in the series, we'll hear from experts on photography and making murals. So please definitely head over to davisart.com slash free resources to sign up. Um, that's also where the recording for today's webinar will live. So if you want to share it with your friends or um, definitely head over there to see the handout that we prepared for you. It also has more resources on there. Um, so you can look at where to find more inspiration for working with contemporary art. And I just want to mention an exhibition opportunity for art teachers. 
Uh, School Arts Magazine and the Frank Juarez Gallery are hosting an art exhibit for teachers called Pushing the Envelope, a male art gallery show. All you have to do is create a small piece of artwork, one that can be mailed in a four by six standard envelope and send it via the US Postal Service to Frank Juarez by July 24th. So you've got plenty of time. Um, the works will be featured in online exhibitions. A selection will be featured in the November issue of School Arts Magazine, and the collection will be shown at NHS Artifacts Gallery at Sheboygan North High School in Wisconsin. We hope that you'll consider making something really fun for this exhibit. A big special thank to our, thanks to our panel of experts today. Um, thank you so much for joining us and to Emma and Rob also for moderating this panel with me. Um, we are really excited and we hope that all everyone has been inspired and rejuvenated. I, I know I definitely have. Um, we are going to stop recording at this point. Um, but we'll stay on for just a few minutes longer to answer any burning questions you might have. And we really thank everyone for joining us this afternoon and we hope that you all stay safe and healthy and we hope to see you again soon.